we're going to finish off this section, which is comparatively short, uh, given that we spent quite a bit of time on the other sections. But there's a version of the central limit theorem where we're not talking about means exactly, we're talking about something else. So for context, when we talk about the sample mean, we mean that for every random variable that's identically distributed, right? So we're taking from the same population. A repeated and identically distributed independently of each other sequence of measurements add them all to each other and then divide by how many we have so this is just the definition of the sample mean it applies also as a random variable and every time we have a new random sample we perform this calculation now what if Instead of thinking about this exactly, what if we just didn't divide by n? So in other words, what if we just performed a sum operation? So we just take all of our observations, add them all together. The only difference really is we're dividing by how many we have, n. And here is where we have our new result, which is the central limit theorem for sums. So these, this is the same um, result, except restated so that we're not thinking about means anymore. And now we have a few a slightly different condition. So suppose we have these random variables in other words we're going to be performing n measurements or observations or independently distributed each with its own mean mu sub i. So the i is going to indicate that it, each one has its own. Um, so this is for, for instance, it could be one, it could be two. And a standard deviation sigma sub i, just the same right, where i is possibly 1, 2, all the way up to n. Then, if n is sufficiently large, such as greater than or equal to 30, then y being the sum of these random variables, has a normal distribution with mean mu, which is the sum of all the means, and the standard deviation is The square root of the sum of all these standard deviations divided by n. Okay, how do we want to think about this? This is kind of wordy, very, there's a lot of symbols floating around, right? So first let's annotate here. So the, this means we're taking random samples. of size n. Independently means that they don't, one happening doesn't affect the other one. Each one has a mean and a standard deviation. 
they could all be different. They could all be the same. Some of them could be different. Some of them could be the same. And if n is sufficiently large, then the sum of all the standard of all the outcomes is has a normal distribution where the mean is the sum of the means. And the standard deviation is the square root of the sum of the means, or sorry, of the sum of the standard deviations divided by n. So as an example, suppose we have 30 binomial random variables. With, eight, with each of them with a mean mu i being equal to um, 5. And each one has a standard deviation equal to uh, 1. Then... The sum variable, so y, being the sum of all these x sub i's, has a normal distribution. So it has a bell curve shape with mean mu being the sum of all of these 30 times, so 30 times 5, and the standard deviation is going to be the square root of the sum of all the, so adding up 130 times, so the square root of 30, divided by n, which is 30. And this, is that right? That seems right. And this is all we're saying. And in fact, this is actually how we get that uh, a sequence of Bernoulli random variables gives us a binomial random variable, and it helps to illustrate how exactly um, we can generalize any sum of any random any collection of random variables as a normal distribution. It's actually a super powerful result that is that we can probably best exemplify by thinking about something as pointless is IQ. Equally pointless is an SAT score. So you may have heard that SAT scores themselves are also normally distributed. In fact, they're designed that way. But they're normally distributed because they're actually the sum of a lot of different different random variables. So there's the random variable of household wealth. If we could quantify that. Plus the random variable of birth weight. Where we also quantify that. Exposure to television as a child. We could quantify that plus uh, rel uh, education level of parents plus relative environmental contaminant exposure. and so on and so on. So all of these, if we could actually pin down their distributions and think of them as random variables, all of those are going into the calculation of IQ and SAT score and all these um, purported measurements of intelligence. 
And that's why each of these factors, when they're normalized, sum up to give us a normal distribution. And it underlies a lot of why when we think about a normal distribution, it arises so often because we have so many measurements that we take of people that are actually sums of different variables.